Hello everyone! Welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. Merry almost Christmas. I am so excited to watch a Christmas movie with you. We had a Patreon movie trivia night a while back and we did a live and it was super fun and all these movie questions from some of the movies that I watched and our winner, not only did he win $100 to Amazon, he could give me five movies of his choosing that I haven't seen yet and I got to pick one to watch. And so he submitted those and he said, if you're gonna watch my pick in December, then Miracle on 34th Street. I knew I've been wanting to watch this one. It's the original from 1947, let's see. Yeah, 1947. I don't know, I think it's gonna be fun to watch this Christmas classic, get in the spirit even more. <laughs> We got red and green lights. Okay, so let's watch this. Is this one of those ones that they've since redone in color? I've been saving this. This is gonna be a long intro. Those old movies always have them. I won't eat it when it starts. If you've been here a while, you know I've liked to try these chocolate bars. This is Candy Cane Crunch, dark chocolate with Hammond's Peppermint Frost. Oh, he's adorable. You're making a mistake. Would you mind stepping out for a moment? Open the door. <laughs> But I wanted to tell you, you're making a rather serious mistake. You've got Cupid where Blitzen should be. Oh, Dasho should be on my right-hand side. Donna's antlers have got four points instead of three. I don't suppose anybody had noticed that except myself. I don't suppose so. Uh, Bye. Not at all. Thanks. Glad to have helped you. Glad to have helped you. You know what's so funny? Just today I read that whole story with the rest of the world about the Macy's Santa on Humans of New York Instagram account. It was so sweet. And this is the Macy's parade. You seem to have got slightly mixed up with this with you. Don't mind if I show you, eh? No, sir. You've been drinking. Don't you realize that there are thousands of children lining the streets? You're a disgrace to the tradition of Christmas. You tell him. Could you tell me who's in charge here? Yes, Mrs. Walker. Oh, One yes. of the men in your parade is seen by What are you doing out of costume? Now get back and get dressed. I thought you were our Santa Claus. Your Santa Claus is intoxicated. It's cold. A man's got to do something to keep warm. Disgraceful. Uh, somebody, Julian, get some black coffee. Wake me up when the parade. <gasps> Could you be Santa Claus? Have you had any experience? Oh, a little. The children mustn't be disappointed. All right, I'll do it. Oh, good. Thanks. Have any of you ever been to this parade? I love a good parade, but this seems too hard to get to. Oh my gosh, he's the real deal. He's the best we've ever had, he didn't need any padding. Oh, I just turned round and there he was. Just think if Mr. Macy had seen the other one. Santa Claus is coming to town. Where's Susan? She's watching the parade. What about Mr. Gailey who lives in the front apartment? I guess it's all right. I'll go on in in a minute. He was a clown last year. They just changed the head and painted him different. He certainly is a giant, isn't he? Not really. There are no giants, Mr. Gailey. What about the giant that Jack killed? Jack? Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack and the Beanstalk. It's a fairy tale. I don't know any fairy tales. He seems very kind and sweet. My mother thinks they're silly. I don't know whether my father thinks they're silly or not. I never met my father. My father and mother were divorced when I was a baby. Well, that baseball player certainly looks like a giant to me. People sometimes go very big, but that's abnormal. <laughs> She's an old soul, I see. Susan's told me quite a lot about you, too. Hello, Mother. Hello, dear. I was a little worried when she said she's at a neighbor man's house by herself, but... And I want to thank you for being so kind to Susan. Cleo tells me that you took them to the zoo yesterday. I must confess it's part of a deep-dyed plot. I also want to meet you. I read someplace that the surest way to meet the mother is to be kind to the child. Oh! He is shooting his shot. doesn't believe in Santa Claus either. No fantasies of any kind. I think we should be realistic and completely truthful with our children. It's a big turkey for dinner, and there are only two of us. Couldn't we invite Mr. Gailey? Oh, don't even think about it. I'll have a sandwich or something. <laughs> I'll have a sandwich or something. Please, Mother, feel... please. Did I ask all right? Hmm? <laughs> Didn't I ask all right, Mr. Gailey? 
That all depends. He's hilarious. Dinner's at three. Thanks. You worked. Yes. <laughs> I never felt like my parents were lying to me and they kept it so magical and those are such fond, magical memories of Christmas as a kid. With that man on the throne, my department will sell more toys than it ever has. Oh yeah, because that's what it's about. It's very good. It's quite dark. Gee, that sure is an elegant costume. I play Santa Claus over at the wine near our blocks. Started about three years ago. They had a costume, but well, it didn't have no pattern and... So I carry my own pattern around with me. I got the job, see? You enjoy impersonating me. Oh, yeah. When I give packages to little kids, I like to watch their faces get that, that Christmas look all of a sudden. It makes me feel kind of good and important. Oh. Here's a list of toys that we have to push. <laughs> Things that we're overstocked on. <gasps> now, you memorize that list, and I'll... When you're finished, come up to the seventh floor. I'll be waiting for you. Making a child take something it doesn't want just because he bought too many of the wrong toys. It's the way they commercialize Christmas. You're here. Okay, in the mall, the, not just the parade Santa. He's the mall Santa. I want to find it, and this like the big ones, only smaller, and I won't do it in the house, I only... <laughs> Well, Peter, I can tell you're a good boy. You'll get your fire engine. Mama wants to thank Santa Claus, too. Uh-oh. I tell you, Macy's ain't got any. Nobody's got any. Fine thing, promising the kid. You don't think I would have said that unless I was sure, do you? At Schoenfeld's on Lexington Avenue. Only eight fifty. a wonderful bargain. Oh, I keep track of the toy market pretty closely. Macy, sending people to other stores. Well, the only important thing is to make the children happy. <sighs> now, we've got skates, and they're very good, too, but they're not quite good enough. Put the gimbals. They are exactly <gasps> what you're looking for. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't gimbals where Elf takes place? I want to congratulate you and Macy's. Imagine sending people to other stores, putting the spirit of Christmas ahead of the commercial. i never done much shopping here before. From now on, I'm going to be a regular Macy customer. Well, personally, I think it's a wonderful idea, too. The point is, will Mr. Macy think so? You gotta think of the long game, mister. Thought as long as we're in the store, you might as well say hello to Santa Claus. Mr. Gailey wants her to believe in the magic. Well, young lady, what's your name? Susan Walker, what's yours? Mine, Chris Kringle. I'm Santa Claus. Oh, you don't believe that, do you? Mm -mm. My mother's Mrs. Walker, the lady who hired you. But I must say you're the best looking one. I'm really Santa Claus. He is, I believe. What would you like me to bring you for Christmas? Nothing, thank you. She's so practical. Hello, Mother. Hello, Susan. Hello, Mr. Gailey. I think you've taken up enough with this gentleman's time now. Well, I thought as long as we're here, we might as well say hello to Santa Claus. Susan, would you stand over here a minute? I want to talk to Mr. Gailey. Now you're making me feel like the proverbial stepmother. You bring her down here, and she sees hundreds of gullible children. This sets up a very harmful mental conflict within her. They grow up considering life a fantasy instead of a reality. No. I must ask you to respect my wishes regarding Susan. Ooh. I'm sorry she doesn't speak English. She's Dutch. When she saw you in the parade yesterday, she said you were Santa Claus and you could talk to her. Ik ben blij dat je gekomen bent. Oh, oh Ben Santa Claus. It was <gasps> zeker that it would salvo cripe by days and leave the domicile. <laughs> oh, imagine how special that must be for her. But when he spoke Dutch to that girl, he... I speak French, but that doesn't make me Joan of Arc. He said you wanted to see me, Mrs. Walker. Come right in. I thought maybe you could help to straighten her out. I'd be glad to. Please tell her that you're not really Santa Claus. Well, I'm sorry to disagree with you, Mrs. Walker, but here I am to prove it. Uh, what's your name? Chris Kringle. I mean your real name. It is my real name. May I have this gentleman's employment card? Here it is, Mrs. Walker. North Pole. Data brazzles my tongue a little bit older than my teeth. Next of kin dash. <laughs> Chris Kringle. The Santa Claus that we had two years ago is back in town. Have I done something wrong? Mr. Macy wants to see you immediately. I'll be right up. Oh, come in, Mrs. Walker. I have just been telling these gentlemen of the new policy. I can't say that I approve of your not consulting the advertising department. In the face of this tremendous response on the part of the public, I can't be angry with you. I admit that on the face of it, this plan sounds idiotic and impossible. Macy's Santa Claus sending customers to Gimbel's. Over 500 thankful parents express undying gratitude to Macy's. Not only will our Santa Claus continue in this manner, I want every salesperson in this store to do the same thing. <gasps> no high pressuring and forcing a customer. He's changing it. He's changing it. I want to thank you two again. In your Christmas envelopes, you'll find a more practical expression of my gratitude. Imagine. I fired him. Who? 
Santa Claus. We'll just have to hire somebody else and have him do the same thing. Heard what Mr. Macy said. We've got to keep him. If you fire him, and then we find out that he wasn't really crazy, Mr. Macy will have us examined and fired. We could have Mr. Sawyer talk to him. Of course. He's a psychologist. We're paid for to examine employees. But first, get that Santa Claus back. Mr. Macy suggested that we find something else for the other Santa Claus. Keep you on by all means. That's mighty good news. Oh, Christmas isn't just a day. It's a frame of mind. Oh, I love him so much. First thing in the morning, would you report to Mr. Sawyer's office? Sawyer? A mental examination? Oh, I don't mind. I've taken dozens of them. Miss Adams, would you get me the Brooks Memorial Home in uh, Great Neck? It's, it's a home for old people. I want to talk to the doctor in charge. How many days in the week? Seven. The first oh, he's so years. cute. Do you get enough sleep? My personal habits are no concern to you. How many fingers do you see? Three. Oh, you bite your nails, too. I want you to stand with your feet together and your arms extended. Then I want you to... Muscular coordination test? Be glad to. <laughs> oh, he's adorable. I love him so much. Are you happy at home, Mr. Sawyer? That will be all, Mr. Kringle. <laughs> Are you happy at home, and he says. And it interests you to know that I've been happily married for 26 years. Her wife's on 672. She says it's very important. Agnes, how many times have I told you not to bother me at the office? I give you a liberal allowance and it's up to you to run the house on it. That fat, stupid brother of yours would get a job you wouldn't have to be pestering oh. me all the time. Seems very happy. Well, Dr. Pierce, uh, Mr. Sawyer. How do you do? How do you do? It's my considered opinion he should be dismissed immediately. <gasps> I don't think there's any doubt about it. He should be placed in a mental institution. Well, excuse me? He only wants to be friendly and helpful. You tell Chris there is no Santa Claus. I grant you he'll argue the point. He'll not become violent. His whole manner suggests aggressiveness. You're aggressive. Naturally, I can't discharge this man. You ask for my opinion and I've given it to you. You can leave, Sawyer. Mrs. Walker, nothing's going to happen. My specialty is geriatrics. I assure you, Chris has no latent maniacal tendencies. There must be someone here at the store who could rent a room out to him. If someone was within, they could steer him away from any trouble. Sort of take custody of him. It's gonna be with Mrs. Walker, isn't it? I, Your son's away at school. What about his room? I'd be glad to. Say, I have an idea. We always have martinis before dinner. I'll make them double strength. I bet after a couple of them, she'll be more receptive to the idea. You take him home to dinner, and I'll call you as soon as my wife's plastic. The least you can do is to have a little headache tonight. Wait, the plan they've got here. I don't play much with them. They play silly games, playing zoo and all of them were animals. He said, what kind of an animal are you? I'm not an animal. I'm a girl. He said, only animals allowed here. Goodbye. That's what makes the game so silly. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so either. You've got to have an imagination. I don't think she has one of those. Oh, sure. That's when you see things, but they're not really there. Make snowballs in the summertime. Or drive a great big bus right down Fifth Avenue. She needs his influence. First thing you've got to learn is how to pretend. And the next time Homer says, what kind of animal are you? You tell him you're a monkey. Now just bend your body over a little like that. Let oh no, the mom's gonna walk in. Right hand up here, under here. Put it down under your lip over here. Oh no. <laughs> What's going on here? We're just having our first lesson in pretending. Oh. Mrs. Walker just happened to mention that they're looking for a room for you. I was just thinking, I'm all alone in my apartment. <gasps> Ride to and from work every day with Mrs. Walker. And Mr. Gailey, it's a deal. Good. And she feels wonderful. Hello. Why, we'd love to have Santa Claus come and stay with us. They have the loveliest room, and they'd be so happy if you'd stay with them. I'm going to stay with Mr. Gailey. Mr. Gailey. Did you see Mr. Gailey looking at them pretending? He knows. He knows. Susie needs some magic. That's what I want for Christmas. You mean a doll's house like this? A real house. If you're really Santa Claus, you can get it for me. Just because every child can't get his wish, that doesn't mean there isn't a Santa Claus. I want a backyard with a great big tree to put a swing on it. Oh. I guess you can't get it, huh? Well, I'll do my best. May I keep this picture? She wants them to move. Nice place you got here. Twin beds in the same room? You know, I think you're right about Mrs. Walker. A little more effort on your part, and she might crawl out of that shell. But find the answer to a question that's puzzled the world for centuries. Does Santa Claus sleep with his whiskers outside or in? Or oh, sleep with them out. Cold air makes them grow. <gasps> Could this be any sweeter? <laughs> They're really taking this seriously. 
It's the greatest goodwill policy I ever heard of. Every shop suddenly thinks of Macy as a benevolent soul. <laughs> what does that make him? Nothing but a profiteering money grubber. From now on, if we haven't got what the customer wants, send him back to Macy's. Wait, Mr. Gimble. I have something I'd like to give our friend here. Just a little something to show my appreciation. Cool. That's very kind of you. I didn't think you were that generous. It's kind of rude to look. Would like me to sing you a little good night song? Doesn't your mother ever sing to you at night? Why should she? I just think it's kind of nice. To market, to market, to buy a fat pig. Home again. Home again, home again, chickity jig. Do you happen to have a spare piece? <laughs> I adore him. Here goes. Hello, Alfred. Hello, Chris. What's the matter? Remember I was telling you how I like to play Santa Claus over at the wine? Well, I was telling that to Mr. Sawyer, see? And, well, he says that's very bad. Why is it bad, does he say? Guys who dress up like Santa Claus give presents away, do it because when they was young, they must have did something bad, feel guilty about it. Oh, my gosh. That's scary. That psychologist can just say things and... It's a lot of rubbish, Alfred. Don't listen to it. He knows what he's talking about. No, he does not. What else has he found wrong with you, Alfred? No. Oh, just that I hate my father. I didn't know it, but he says I do. And he sees you every day? I just sit in a chair and say anything that comes into my head. A few things have just come into my head, and I'm going to say them. Rubbish, this Mr. Sawyer. Are you a licensed psychiatrist? What business is it of yours? You have no more right to analyze Alfred than, the, than a dentist has to remove a gallbladder. I... Your job here is to give intelligence tests. He's not even a real psychologist. Either you stop analyzing Alfred or I go straight to Mr. Mason. Get out before I have you thrown out. Oh! Oh, gosh. He's unconscious. I tell you, we were merely talking. The moment I attacked his delusion, you become... Liar! And you better have the examination right away before Mr. Macy finds out. You explain to Mr. Kringle. This is going to hurt Chris very deeply. And I don't want to be the one to do it. Go tell Mr. Macy about Sawyer. He's apt to become violent. You better get him out of the store on some other pretext. Once outside, I'll explain it to him. Got to take some publicity pictures this afternoon. Oh. You and the mayor. Good. <laughs> what a little rat. Where to? Did she know about this? We all discussed it. Yes, he's gonna help. Excuse me. Why, yes, we share an apartment together. But why, Doctor? What did he... Oh, he's quite comfortable. He was wondering if you could bring over his personal things. Yes, in view of his examination, I'm afraid I shall have to recommend him. <gasps> They're gonna commit him? He's Santa. Well, Chris, oh. the last few days I've had great hope. I had a feeling Doris was beginning to believe in me. She didn't know anything about the taking pictures with the mayor. All right, she had doubts. Why not? She hasn't really believed in anything for years. That's the truth. He's called normal, and I'm not. But if that's normal, I don't want it. I'm with him. You can't just think of yourself. What happens to you matters to a lot of other people. People like me who believe in what you stand for. Susie, who are just beginning to. Jailbreak? Let's get out of here. But you'll get me out of this. You'll think of something. I'll do everything I can, Chris. I don't care if he failed ten examinations. You get the case dropped tomorrow, or you might have another lump to match the one that Chris gave you. Thank goodness. Age unknown. Very old, Your Honor. The man calls himself Chris Kringle. Mr. Gailey to see you, Your Honor. He represents Mr. Kringle. Your Honor, there seems to be undue haste in this case. I request a formal hearing to which I may bring witnesses. I shall bring in a habeas corpus this afternoon. We have a hearing on uh, Monday morning at 10 o'clock. Okay. Mr. Macy would rather drop the whole thing right now. Uh, Mr. Gailey, hey, my name's Sawyer. Oh, so you're Sawyer. Yes, he's Sawyer. So if you would agree to put this matter through quietly? You know, if I'm going to win this case, I'm going to have to have public opinion. Publicity's just the way to do it. Thanks, Mr. Sawyer. You're in trouble, Mr. Sawyer. This Kringle case is dynamite. Let some judge handle it that isn't coming up for re-election. What is wrong with people? I'm an honest man, and nobody's going to hold it against me for doing my duty as I see it. Oh, this is... this is too much. Just let him out. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The commitment papers are before you. I should like to call the first witness. Mr. Kringle, will you take the stand? Good morning, Your Honor. <laughs> what is your name? Chris Kringle. Where do you live? That's what this hearing will decide. You believe that you're Santa Claus? Of course. State rest, Your Honor. Weak. No further questions at this time. 
I'm fully aware of my client's opinions. Mr. Kringle is not sane because he believes himself to be Santa Claus. Anyone who thinks he's Santa Claus is not sane. You believe yourself to be Judge Harper. No one questions your sanity because you are Judge Harper. I intend to prove that Mr. Kringle is Santa Claus. He's crazy, too. I love it. Hello. Hello. <gasps> We're going to celebrate. Danny throws bombshell in the New York Supreme Court. But you can't possibly prove that he's Santa Claus. What about your bosses? And either I drop this impossible case immediately, or they will drop me. But I quit. I can't let Chris down. He needs me. He's a nice old man. But you've got to be realistic and face facts. And I promise you, if you believe in me and have faith in me, everything will... It's not a question of faith. It's just common sense. Don't you see? It's not just Chris that's on trial. It's everything he stands for. You're talking like a child. You're living in a realistic world. Don't get ahead that way. You give up your job, and then you expect me to be happy about it. Someday you're going to find out that your way of facing this realistic world just doesn't work. Don't overlook those lovely intangibles. You'll discover they're the only things that are worthwhile. I feel like he wouldn't like a woman like that because she's so... But I like the old man. Pringle has been declared a menace to society. Oh, gosh. No matter what they may say about me, I've got to do it. No, you don't. Your name? R.H. Macy. Recognize the gentleman seated there. Will you tell us who he is? Chris Kringle. Do you believe him to be of sound mind? I certainly do. You're under oath. Do you really believe that this man is Santa Claus? Do you really believe that this man is Santa Claus? I do. <laughs> Psychologist. You're fired. There is no such person as Santa Claus, and everybody knows it. Oh, do they? Your Honor, we request an immediate ruling. Is there <gasps> or is there not a Santa Claus? Well, <clears throat> the court will take a short recess uh, to consider the matter. We need more evidence. If you go back in there and rule that there's no Santa Claus, you better start looking for that chicken farm right now. I'm a responsible judge. How can I seriously rule that there is a Santa Claus? You go back and tell him there's no Santa Claus. Kids read it and they don't hang up their stockings. The toy manufacturers are going to like that. You go on back in there and tell them that you rule there's no Santa Claus. Can you just say, I believe that he believes this? The question of Santa Claus seems to be largely a matter of opinion. Will Thomas Mara please take the stand? Thomas Mara Jr. Hello, Daddy. You know the difference between telling the truth and telling a lie. Everybody knows you shouldn't tell a lie, especially in court. <laughs> do you believe in Santa Claus, Tommy? Sure I do. What does he look like? There he is, sitting there. I protest. Overruled. <laughs> Why are you so sure there's a Santa Claus? Because my daddy told me so. My daddy wouldn't tell me anything that wasn't so. Your Honor, the state of New York concedes the existence of Santa Claus. We ask that Mr. Gailey cease presenting personal opinion as evidence. Your point's well taken, Mr. Mara. I'm afraid we must agree. No! I ask for an adjournment until tomorrow. Well, uh, I guess that's that. There's a way out. There's got to be. There is. Because he is the real Santa Claus. Bring in the reindeer. Bring in the elves. But I've got a feeling he is Santa Claus, Mother. So kind and nice and jolly. He must be Santa. Must be Santa. I'm going to write him a letter right now and cheer him up. They believe. They believe. Oh boy, I even believe you'll get me the present I asked for. I believe in you too. Oh! Hey Lou, how many Santa Claus letters we got down at the dead letter office? Be about 50,000 of them. Kinda nice to get rid of them, wouldn't it, huh? Hey, that's a wonderful idea, hey. I've tried every way to get some competent authority. This is worth more than all the governors and mayors. In view of these facts, I ask that you sign the commitment papers without further delay. Boo! I'd like to submit the following facts and evidence. This is the post office department, an official agency of the United States government. It has a great deal, Your Honor, if I may be allowed to proceed. Then, Your Honor, I want to introduce these pieces. They're addressed simply Santa Claus. Delivered to Mr. Kringle by bona fide employees of the post office. But three letters, Your Honor, are hardly positive proof. I have further exhibits, Your Honor. Them here on the desk. Bring them in, boys. Okay, that post office guy did us a favor after all. Every one of these letters is addressed to Santa Claus. Therefore, the post office department recognizes this man, Chris Kringle, the one and only Santa Claus. 
Since the United States government declares this man to be Santa Claus, this court will not dispute it. Case dismissed. Oh. He did it. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Very Merry Christmas to you. And the same to you. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, I love him. I had to wait to tell you. I got your note. I can't think of anyone I'd rather spend Christmas with. Would you like to come to dinner tonight? Oh, I can't. It's Christmas Eve. Oh, Supreme Court declared you to be Santa Claus, and personally and professionally, I agree with them. But there are lots of presents there for you, darling. Not the one I wanted. It doesn't matter. I didn't get it. I'm sorry, Susie. I tried my best. You didn't get it because you're not Santa Claus. I was wrong when I told you that, Susie. You must have faith in it. Faith is okay. believing in things when common sense tells you not to. Just because things don't turn out the way you want them to the first time, you've still got to believe in people. Go this way. You'll miss a lot of traffic. I've written it all down. Silly, but I believe. Goodbye, Miss Walker. Goodbye, Albert. Goodbye. <laughs> this must be the turn here. He's going to get them the house, isn't he? Stop, Uncle Fred! Stop! Susie! This is my house, Mommy. And I asked Mr. Now, Kringle Susie. for it. Just like I knew it would be. Oh, you were right, Mommy. Mr. Kringle is Santa Claus. There's a swing! There is one! There is one! You told her that. <laughs> sign outside said it's for sale we can't let her down i never really doubted you i must be a pretty good lawyer i'd take a little old man and legally prove to the world that he's santa claus did you just get goosebumps everywhere can't be must have been left here by the people that moved out maybe i didn't do such a wonderful thing after all I believe, I believe, I really think I truly do. I loved it. It is a <laughs> crime that I have never seen that before. It's the perfect Christmas movie. He is, was Santa. Like that is the Santa I picture and know. I gotta show my kids this. It was just like the sweetest. I loved Frank. I can't imagine a better Santa. I really can't. Frank? Fred. His name is Fred. Mr. Galus. Okay, Susie was perfect, everyone was perfect, redemption, post office guy, the judge, the world believes! Okay, that really makes me want to actually go to the Macy's in New York Santa one day. Anyways, it was so classically, perfectly Christmassy, sweet, tender, heartwarming, I loved it. I loved it! Thank you so much for sharing that with me. And I hope you have a wonderful, merry little Christmas. I know that the holidays can be fun and magical and Christmas is so special, but it can also be really, really hard if you're going through hard things. So if that is you, I wish you the merriest Christmas. You are always welcome here at Popcorn in Bed. You matter, you are loved, and Merry Christmas. <laughs>